As a general rule, when I'm working to apply a targeted adjustment on an image, I focus more energy on the layer mask than on the selection. In other words, I don't worry about getting the selection perfect and instead save most of my work for refining the layer mask. There's one exception though, and that is when the refine selection brush can be helpful, and that is very often the case. Let's take a look at an example. I'm going to start off by just creating a quick selection of the background of this image. And you can see that it seems to have done a pretty good job. We've got what appears to be a reasonably accurate selection. But as soon as I zoom in, you see that all is not as good as it seemed from a distance. Many of the fur details here were included in the selection and they should not be. Well, let's take a look at how the refine selection brush can help. I'll start off by selecting the refine selection brush from the tool options panel and then I can get to work refining the selection and I think you'll be very impressed with the quality of the result. First off, you'll see that we have a color overlay and that is established by the view option. I can view either a color overlay indicating areas of the image that are not selected or I can view an on black version of the selection or an on white version. In all three cases, we're seeing an overlay where the image is not selected but I do generally find the overlay option to be the best option because I can still see the subject, the area of the image that I'm not selecting versus selecting. I can fine tune that setting with the opacity control as well as the actual color of that overlay. In this case, of course, the background is green, the overlay is red, that works perfectly fine. And so I'll leave that set to a red overlay at a moderately high opacity setting. As with many of the other selection tools, I do have an add to selection option as well as a subtract from selection option. There's also a smoothing option where I can paint in smoothness for the edge of my selection. Generally, I would save that type of work for later in the process. But what's most interesting with the refined selection brush is the push and pull behavior. I'm able to add areas to a selection and subtract areas from a selection but with the help of some edge detection that can really have a significant impact on the results that you will achieve. With this push option active, if I move my mouse out over the image and place it over an area of the photo that is already selected, you'll see that I have a plus symbol in the middle of my brush. If I move over the area that is not selected, you'll see that I have a minus symbol. So if I begin my work in a selected area, I'll be adding to the selection. And if I begin my work outside of the selection, I'll be subtracting from the selection. So I'm essentially pushing the edge outward relative to where I started painting. So if I need to subtract some areas, I could paint outward starting in the area that is not selected. And if I want to add areas to the selection, I can start in the selected area and push those areas out toward the object that I want to select. As you might be able to tell already, I'll zoom in a little bit so we can get a closer look, we're already getting a cleaned up version of that edge. In other words, there's some edge detection going on. If you click and drag and then hold the mouse button, you'll also see that there's a little bit of a dynamic quality going on here. I'll start with the subtract option and then click. And if I just hold the mouse, you can see there's an animation happening in the background. There's additional refinement of my selection. And so I can keep that mouse button held down if I want to perform a little bit of expansive work with the add or subtract that I've been painting. Of course, I can also adjust the size of the brush that I'm painting with. I can click and drag the size slider. I can also use the left and right square bracket keys on the keyboard. The left square bracket key will reduce the brush size and the right square bracket key will increase the brush size. I can specify the selection edge hardness, shifting between hard versus soft, essentially a transition along the edge of the area that I'm painting. More often than not, when I'm using the refined selection brush, I find that I want a relatively soft edge because I'm working with a relatively soft or fuzzy subject. I can also adjust the snap strength, and you'll see the snapping behavior a little more clearly in just a moment, but I can change the strength of that snap, in other words, the edge detection. How strongly will this tool snap to whatever it detects as the nearest edge based on the areas that I'm painting? As a general rule, I would use a moderately high value here, but if you're finding that it's not quite snapping to the correct area, 
you may need to adjust. And this depends on how much contrast there is. As a general rule, I would tend toward increasing snap strength if I'm having trouble getting the right edge within the image to be selected. But you can tone things down as needed. It will be a bit of trial and error. But quite frankly, there's not a huge amount of difference between a high versus low setting here. So I wouldn't worry too much about your snap strength. Generally, I would just leave it set to the default value. So that takes care of the various options, but actually, as you'll find in just a moment, most of this is not of a significant concern because it's really the edge detection feature of the Refine Selection brush that makes it so powerful. Let's take a closer look at a portion of the fur here. I'll zoom in on this area, for example, just so that we can see what's going on a little more clearly. And again, I can start painting within the selected area if I want to add to the selection, or I can start painting within the non-selected area if I want to subtract from the selection. But actually, I generally don't use either of those options with the Refine Selection brush. And the reason for that is that there's a third option, a middle ground, as it were. If you hover your mouse over the actual edge of your initial selection, you'll see that the plus or minus symbol disappears. If I then click and drag in order to paint over the edge of the image, and once again, holding the mouse button if I want to keep expanding that area, I can continue holding the mouse until I've expanded to cover all of, in this case, that fur detail that I need to refine the selection for, and then I'll release the mouse, and as if by magic, we get a very good selection edge. I'll press and hold the spacebar key on the keyboard to temporarily activate the hand tool, then I'll pan to another section here. Once again, hover over the edge of the actual selection area and just paint to define that edge. You may notice that I have a little bit of a fuzzy area, a little bit of a red overlay out in the background area here. And for those types of situations, then I might actually use the plus paint, the ability to add to the selection. So I'll click within the selected area and then paint out toward that edge. And you'll see that it cleans that up, but now I need to come back and do some more of that refinement work. That looks a bit better. I can fine tune a few of these additional areas. You'll notice that in some cases there's a little bit of back and forth involved. I'll go ahead and reduce the size of my brush so that I can paint directly on some of the fur detail areas here. There we go, much better result. And I can continue panning through. So typically what I would do here is start and zoomed out a bit more. And let's just go up to an upper portion of the selection edge here. Once again, hovering over the edge of that existing selection so that I get neither the plus nor the minus, click and paint along the edge here. Bearing in mind that in some cases there's longer furs than elsewhere in the image, and so I might need to come back and clean things up for some of those individual furs. But even working at a bit of a distance, notice that when I release the mouse, I'm getting a significant improvement in that area of the image in terms of the selection. Down here I can see even at a distance there's some additional cleanup work necessary. Let me zoom out just a little bit more here and I'll paint over some of these additional fur detail areas, cleaning up that interior section as well, and that looks much, much better. So you can see, I still have a bit of work to do. There's still some errant furs here that are not included as part of that selection just yet, or that are included too much in the selection, depending on the particular area of the photo. But as I think is abundantly clear at this point, using this Refine Selection Brush can be a tremendously helpful way to fine-tune a selection to perfection.